Hey team, let's talk about John Wick Chapter 4. No real spoilers here, but we will talk about... Crushing Defeat Media. How the movie did with character setting and plot, what the story is about at a very high level, some things that aren't great, things that are great, and finally, my overall score and whether or not I would recommend seeing it in the theater. In movies and storytelling in general, you have three components. Characters, plot, and setting. To successfully engage an audience, writers really only want one, maybe two of these to be complex. Otherwise, you end up in a situation like with the movie John Carter, where all three were complex, and for the most part, only those who read the books really enjoyed the movie. It lost $200 million, if that tells you anything. So first, here is the characters. Pick any Tarantino movie, for example, and you have a movie and a story with complex characters. However, in John Wick 4, the characters are quite simple. These are mostly one-dimensional characters whose motivations are easy to understand. Here, John Wick wants freedom, Kane wants to protect his family, Tracker wants money, so on and so forth. Next is plot. And the plot of all John Wick movies is simple. It's a basic revenge story. Someone does something to John Wick, and he goes on and gets revenge. John Wick 4 is no exception. It's the conclusion to what was set up at the end of John Wick 3. And though revenge plots may be simple... They basically always work. Some of the best movies and stories of all time are about revenge. Braveheart. I'm going to pick a fight. Gladiator. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. The Count of Monte Cristo, all great examples of this. Lastly is setting. John Wick 4 takes place in cities like New York City, which in my opinion is used far too often, Osaka, Berlin, and Paris. These are places most of us have at least heard of, and we fully understand the rules of those places. So it would be really easy to label the setting as simple as well. However, when you consider the world of assassins that John Wick takes place in, it's actually quite complex. There are rules that govern who assassinates who and where, rules about who owes who favors. I'm just saying, there are a lot of rules in this world. And in John Wick 4, the setting gets even more complex with the introduction of things like duels. Even the gold coins that are used as currency in this universe add complexity. I mean, how much are those coins worth? I have no idea. Is one coin worth 50 bucks? Is it worth $50,000? No clue. All of these things add complexity to the setting. So what we end up with is a simple set of characters, simple plot, and a complex setting, which is perfect for a great story. So what is the story of John Wick Chapter 4 about? Well, basically the Illuminati analog who controls the assassin world, known as The Table, is pursuing John Wick. Why? Because he broke all of the rules. Those rules we were talking about, he broke all of them. And the worst rule he broke is not dying after being assassinated and shot off a roof at the end of the third movie. Spoilers for that movie. Now he has an ever-increasing bounty on his head and a colorful cast of assassins who are out to get him. The big bad in this movie is the Marquis de Garmont, who is expertly played by Bill Skarsgård. New management. Lawrence Fishburne returns as the Bowery King. Lance Reddick as Sharon. May he rest in peace. Ian McShane is back as Winston. And Aaron Kellyman as John Wick. (laughs) sorry about that (laughs) of course John Wick is played by Keanu Reeves anyway I'm not going to name them all the cast is huge but thankfully it never feels bloated here now the absolute standout for me and probably anyone else who watches this movie film is Donnie Yen as Kane Donnie Yen is a national treasure he may be from Hong Kong but I think he lives in Boston now so He's our national treasure here in America. And no, I didn't just dox Donnie Yen. Boston is a huge place, and I found that on Google anyway. So let's talk about some, uh, now that we've talked about what it's about at a very high level, let's talk about some minor issues I had with John Wick 4. And no, one of them is not that it was three hours long. Unlike some people, if the pacing is good, I am not allergic to a long movie. That is what's called a return on investment. I mean, really, whose life 
is so obtuse that an extra 30 minutes in a theater is quote-unquote problematic. Something I did have a small issue with is that it didn't really start what's called in action, which is always a great way to start a sequel. So John Wick 2, for example, starts off right away with that big set piece where he gets his car back. John Wick 3, he's in the library kicking butt after only six minutes of the movie. John Wick 4, we get a teeny tiny action scene in the desert, but then it takes 40 minutes before we get an action scene like those other two. Next is John's motivation. Do I really care about him gaining his freedom? Maybe, but not near as much as the thing about the dog being an analog for his wife because his wife gave it to him after she died and then they shot the dog. There's no comparison there and spoilers for John Wick 1, I guess, but if you haven't seen it, how the hell are you this far into this video? But look, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad motivation, and I have no idea how they would match the motivation for revenge in the first film. Give him another wife and a dog, and then... Pfft. But it's just, it's just not as impactful, and that's totally okay. So, I used to be one of the hosts of an anime podcast called Anime Shoshin. You can still find it on just about any podcast platform, and we would often talk about what we called typical reviewer nitpicks. These are things like tiny little plot holes or contrivances, things that frankly don't actually impact the quality of the movie or show. Uh, like when reviewers complain about any and all exposition in a movie. Look, sometimes a bit of exposition is the most effective and efficient way to tell the audience something and get back to the good stuff. So exposition isn't always a terrible thing. But here are a couple of the typical reviewer nitpicks I have for John Wick 4. First, they wear suits that can stop bullets, but then knives and swords can go through these suits no problem. How does that work exactly? No idea. I mean, it's fine, suspension of disbelief and all, but it did make me go, hmm, and momentarily broke the immersion for me. That said, the bulletproof suits are worth it because it eliminates the need for stormtrooper levels of bad aim. Next, and this one is kind of funny, but some of the background action is unintentionally hilarious. I noticed multiple times that that thing where the batter up bad guy is doing weird stuff with his hands while he's waiting for his turn to get beat up. There's a, there's a Spanish speaking character called Chidi. Chidi? He is one of the worst offenders. There's a scene where he looks like he's mid YMCA dance while he's waiting for his turn in the background. They mostly happen in the first half of the movie, but if you're looking for some bonus laughs, try to keep an eye on what the, what the characters are doing in the background. It can get pretty funny in this movie. Um, okay, let, that's pretty much it for the bad stuff. Let's talk about some good stuff. By far the best thing about this movie is the action. I feel that action scenes themselves took a turn for the better with movies like Taken, the original, and the Bourne Identity movies, the fights in these movies became cleaner and easier to follow than we had seen before. And I, I say before, a ton of movies are still very jump cut, messy garbage even today with their action. But anyway, the John Wick series takes clarity of action to an entirely new level. If you aren't aware, the John Wick movies are directed by Chad Stahelski who is a former stuntman turned director, and that is why the action is so good in these movies. It is prioritized by a director who worked on stunts for at least 55 movies that I could find. Side note here, The Crow is one of my favorite movies of all time, and Chad Stahelski was Brandon Lee's stunt double for reshoots, reshoots that were required, it was hard to say, after Brandon Lee tragically lost his life during filming. Uh, which was very sad, but it's interesting that he was in that film. And a side side note, Bill Skarsgård, who is in this movie, John Wick 4, plays the main character, Eric Draven, in the upcoming Crow remake. So it's kind of like six degrees of Kevin Bacon up in here. 
Something else I really liked about John Wick chapter 4 is we, as the audience, get preached to zero. It is virtually devoid of the message. Sorry, I had to do it. And, And I couldn't be happier about this. I mean, regardless of how you feel about emotional support dogs, and you'll see what I mean, there is no agenda here. And yet the cast is more diverse than the majority of the preachy trash we get from Hollywood these days. All kinds of amazing diversity that makes sense and fits the story and the setting. And we don't need to know who the characters like to sleep with. That doesn't matter. So we aren't told that. Shoot, men in this movie and in this franchise are even allowed to be friends. It's great. So I love that about this movie and and the franchise overall. I've got one positive in the middle of the list here that some may put on their negative list or in the negative column. And geez, I hope this makes sense, but it's the new mechanics. When they patch a new mechanic into a sequel in order to move the plot along, uh, for example, I mentioned dueling earlier. This is a new mechanic introduced in John Wick 4. Um, Let me see if I can explain this differently. I also mentioned that I'm into anime, and for anyone else who likes anime, you'll be very familiar with this. New mechanics or new abilities and story mechanics are introduced all of the time in anime, and then they get explained afterwards. Go Netflix. A documentary? John Wick 4 doesn't go this far. They expose why the new mechanic of dueling is new, and then they pay it off later. So I see new mechanics uh, in the way that they're handled here as a strength. I mean, really, how else do you introduce new and interesting things into your sequel if you don't have these new mechanics? And frankly, it's done so much better here than, like, the Eternals didn't help Thanos because they can only fight one brand of CGI monster. You get what I'm saying. There's also quite a few Easter eggs and callouts in this movie that I really liked. I'll mention a few of them here. You may see more than I did. One is a box of shotgun shells labeled as Dragon's Breath. This is a callout to another Keanu Reeves movie, Constantine, one he and I would love to see a sequel to. They even act like Dragon's Breath in the Constantine movie. They're similar. That's all I'm going to say about that, but uh, I thought that was a pretty cool callout. Next deleting people with a pencil, pencil, with a pencil, I can't do it, is a running theme throughout these movies. Keep your eyes peeled for the pencil that shows up in this one. It goes by real quick, but I'll give you a hint. It's not John Wick who wields the pencil. And lastly, I Am Klaus is an obvious shout out to I Am Groot. I Am Groot. Uh Uh-huh. I Am Groot. That's right. I Am Groot. No! You may like it, but to me, I Am Klaus is dumb, but they they can't all be winners. Um, And then a bonus Easter egg, there is like a Kingpin style fight, like Daredevil versus Kingpin. To me, that's got to be a call out to that. And it's in this movie, and I loved it. Uh, Something else I really enjoyed is how much of this movie was shot what's called in camera meaning it really actually happened in the really real world. One of the reasons why CGI often feels fake or flat is because somewhere deep within our souls, we know that that never happened. But when you see movies like this, where the cars and humans actually did the stuff in the really real world, it feels way better. And any CGI that was used here was used as it should be to enhance not replace. I mean, I can't tell you what was done in this movie using computers and what wasn't, and I think that's how it should be. So they did a really great job of keeping things in camera. All of the John Wick movies also do a great job at not insulting the audience. I know I talked about the benefits of exposition earlier, but it can definitely get out of hand, and John Wick 4, like its predecessors, doesn't hold your hand. More often than not, they show you the rules of the world and know that we are all bright enough to keep up and understand. Show, don't tell, whenever possible, is an amazing strategy for storytelling and movies in particular, and it's implemented very well here. All right, let me check my list. Um, I guess just one more thing really quick before my rating and recommendation, something sequels must do, is that they must one-up the movies that came before. 
These are action movies, these John Wick movies. And I promise you, unequivocally, without a doubt, this one has the best action out of all four movies. They fully fulfilled the one-up requirement. It ramps to it in the second half, I will say that. But good grief, I'm smiling right now thinking back on it. The action is in fucking credible. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. You've probably already guessed this, but I really enjoyed this movie, and I give it a 9 out of 10. Only one point lost, just because it doesn't have the emotional pull of the first movie. I don't know, again, I don't know how they would do that, but gotta be fair with the rating, right? That said, it is 100% worth three hours of your life to see it right now in the theater. So please go see it in the theater and vote for this movie with your wallet. We need to let Hollywood know that regardless of our views or our disagreements, we want to see more movies like this. It's like my wife said when we got in the car afterwards, people just want an escape. And she gave it a 10, by the way, a perfect 10. She freaking loved this movie, and I love my wife for that. Uh, I'm also looking forward to a movie they showed in the previews. I call it John Wick's Great Grandpa versus Nazis. And if that doesn't pique your interest, I don't know what will. But the movie's actually called Sisu. So looking forward to that one as well. You'll see the preview for that if you go see this in the theater. So anyway, cheers and thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want and aren't or don't if you don't want to. Uh, but I appreciate you making it this far. Bye bye. I'm going to need a gun. Crushing Defeat Media.